guys so today's topic of discussion is going to be on cell junction so what is a cell junction a cell junction is the connection between neighboring cells and between the cell and its extracellular matrix the extracellular matrix is nothing but the space or the substance seen around the cell since this type of a junction is going to hold membranes that is cell membrane of two adjacent cells it is also called as a membrane junction let us uh, compare a cell junction to that of a bridge so the main purpose of a bridge is to connect two adjacent structures or places to each other similarly a cell junction is going to connect two cells that are adjacent to each other or between the cell and its extracellular matrix so this is what a cell junction is and what its purpose is now let's see what all are the types of cell junction so the first type is the occluding junction so occluding junction is like a closed door nothing is going to pass through this junction next is the communicating junction this is like a doorway without a door anything can pass through these junctions next is the anchoring junction so this anchoring junction is actually going to connect two adjacent cells it is a mechanical attachment between two neighboring cells or the cell and its extracellular matrix so let's move on to the topic of interest today which is the occluding junction so an occluding junction is a type of cell junction where there is no intercellular exchange that is no exchange is happening between two adjacent cells be it molecules ions whatever it is there is no exchange between two adjacent cells okay so the most common example of occluding junctions as you have already guessed is the tight junction so it is like a brick wall so when it is cemented properly it is strong and nothing can get through it so it is also called as zona occludens so this specifically prevents passage of large molecules so when the molecular weight or the size of particular substance is more than the pore size that is seen it's not going to pass through but small molecules may it is a selective barrier for small extremely small molecules now these tight junctions are seen in region where the cell membrane of adjacent cells are going to fuse very firmly now what are the examples so it is seen in the epithelial and the endothelial or the lining of blood vessels seen in intestinal mucosa then it's seen in the kidney in the wall of the renal tubule then it's seen in the blood vessels again in the capillary wall then it's seen in the brain in the choroid plexus so what is the structure of this tight junction so these blue things dumbbell shaped things that you see here this is the tight junction and this thing this wavy thing is actually the cell membrane so you can see that the, there are two halves of tight junction or two ridges these are stuck to each other holding the cell membranes also firmly to each other so this spans in the extracellular space so two ridges they are fused together closely approximating the two cell membrane now these tight junctions are actually held firmly by means of tight junction strands now this full structure of this tight junction is maintained by its membrane proteins that is tight junction proteins so there are of two types there is tight membrane protein or integral membrane protein which is occluded cladden junctional adhesion molecules or a jam then scaffold framework platform or peripheral membrane or cytoplasmic plaque protein these are singular simplekin and zo123 now if you see this diagram you will understand what the function is so occluded cladden and jam these are the tight membrane protein or your integral membrane protein these proteins are seen in the space between the two membranes so these things are what is holding them together now these tight membrane proteins are inserted or held firmly within the cell membrane by the 
scaffold proteins. So these are going to get insert your uh, tight membrane protein to the cell membrane structure. So what are other functions of these tight junctions? So the function is mainly it holds the adjacent cells firmly to each other thereby providing strength and stability to the tissue. Then it is a selective barrier for small molecules. Then it allows selective diffusion between the neighboring cells. This is going to act as a fence for movement of proteins and lipids. Large molecules are not allowed to pass through it. So protein and lipid cannot pass through this barrier. Then it helps in maintaining the cell polarity. How? Because it is fencing action. So the proteins are going to remain within that particular cell thereby increasing its negativity. Then blood brain barrier. So now blood brain barrier is a tight junction mediated barrier that is seen in the brain which is formed by the blood vessels. So this prevents the entry of majority of the substances into the brain thereby protecting it from toxins and harmful substances. For example, dopamine is a substance which cannot pass into the brain whereas its drug concoction which is levodopa which is given in Parkinsonism can actually pass into the brain. are the different diseases which are caused by mutation of this tight junction. First one is hereditary deafness. Then there is a scaly skin condition called as ichthyosis. Then another condition where there is sclerosis of the biliary tract resulting in structures caused by inflammation which is called as sclerosing cholangitis. Then Hereditary deficiency in magnesium can also co uh, be caused by mutation in tight junctions. Finally, very deadly uh, sarcoma that is a soft tissue cancer that is seen in the body that is synovial sarcoma. So that's all for today guys. So if you have any queries, comments or you want any topic to be explained again or you want any other particular topic to be given more priority. You can always send us a message in the comment box or you can contact us on our Instagram page cracking.n underscore So have a nice day. Be safe.